Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be filming my bookshelf tour for you. I'm standing right in front of it. Um, I have quite the extensive book collection and that's uh, someone requested me a long time ago. Can you film it again? I did it in my old place, but in this new place I haven't filmed one yet. Um, in terms of organization, not much has changed, so I'll talk you through that first and then we'll go over the shelves. Now I put up a poll in my community tab to ask people how they would want me to do this video, whether they wanted me to sh pull out every book and show every single cover, or whether they just wanted to have an overview and that I talk about some of my favorites. It was almost 50-50, but the second option where I give an overview and pull out some of my favorites, that one was slightly uh, voted for a little bit more. Um, so that's why that is the approach that I'm going to be taking when I take you through these shelves. Before we get into that, uh, let me talk you through the shelving and the organization that I have. The shelves that I have are not the billies that everybody seems to be having, but instead I went for the Evar uh, by Ikea. So these are also Ikea shelves. These are just an open style shelf that are solid wood. So I feel they can carry a lot more weight. And since over on this side, uh, I also how use it to store my music collection. I like how I can use these shelves and customize them whichever way I want them to give me the storage needs that I ultimately need to house all of my stuff. So what I think we can do first is I'm going to take you a little back and I'm going to show you, tell you a little bit what I keep in each one and then we'll go shelf by shelf. Welcome to my bookshelf. Uh, as you can see, this is it in full glory. I cannot really fit the closest one into the frame. Um, but let's just start with the bookcase right here on our right hand side. That is mostly nonfiction, as well as two shelves. The top two shelves are all classics. I won't show you the nonfiction ones for too long because that probably won't be all that interesting. Then most of my fiction is in the other two shelves. Uh, the middle shelf of the three shelves filled with books are color coordinated. Each shelf has its own color. So we start with black at the top, then white, then brown. For some reason I have a lot of brown books. Then we get red, green, blue, and then we get purple, gray, pink, uh, yellow, orange books at the bottom. And in my overspill of the blue shelf, because I have more blue books than fit onto one shelf, that's in the bottom shelf in the left uh, bookshelf right there. These are mostly standalones or they are first books in a series, a series that I still need to read. So those are the books I wanna get through and then when I start reading them, um, I will probably use my, uh, move them to my series shelf because the one all the way in the left, those are all book series. I like keeping series together as much as possible. Though you will see it doesn't always work that way because there are a couple of series that are scattered around. Not sure why I do that, but hey. Um, what you will see missing from these shelves are my Harry Potter books. I keep those on a separate shelf, which I will be showing you towards the end of this video. So let's just get to uh, the shelves. I think I'm going to start you at the bottom shelf right here with the nonfiction and then sort of go through it that way. And then we end with Harry Potter in a different shelf. Okay, this is my first nonfiction shelf, and this is all the way at the bottom. Um, my tripod can't go tiny enough to actually show you this because it's so close to the bottom. Um, but these are a lot of the books that I needed to buy when I was studying English. Um, so we start with all of the anthologies right here on the right. So I actually don't have to buy a lot of classics or poetry books because they're pretty much all in there. If we move a little bit to the left here because you can't see everything. We are moving into sort of linguistics. Uh, I do, took a lot of linguistics courses and some old English, middle English kind of things. So those are all course books. And then I've got a few bits at the top that didn't fit anywhere else. This is the next shelf up and these are mostly dictionaries and more language related books, but these are more like the fun ones. So these aren't the ones that I needed for courses per se, but that I bought because I just like language and I like reading about language. Then we get our third shelf of nonfiction and these are books that I all needed for teaching jobs. Um, and then over here to the right, we have some books again about teaching 
And then we have some books that I bought while I was traveling from like different museums around the world that I really enjoyed and they had good catalogs. So that's why those are all there. And then this is the nonfiction shelf where I really sort of have books that I really enjoy. Uh, I took American history courses, so that's why this is here. So this is all my American history stuff. But here we get all of the like nonfiction books that I like to read. As you can see, there's a lot of English and British and world history here, because that's simply what I like to read most. A little bit about like organization, about music, those kind of things I enjoy too. Um, one of the like one of the books that I'm really looking forward to is actually this one. This is a book I bought last year when I was in London, and it's a Nocturnal History of London by Matthew Beaumont. Look at that cover. I think it's stunning. It is a bit of a big one, but it's it's a book I, that I think I will enjoy. All right, so I hope this isn't too wobbly because my uh, my tripod has uh, run out of space, so I need to show it to you this way. This is, again, a shelf with some old books from when I was a child. Uh, some children's book that I used to read, as well as all of my mythology books. I used to be a complete mythology buff. Um, and then again, some books about music and some art and philosophy books as well. It's a bit of a ragtag kind of uh, selection here. So I'm now up on a chair, so I hope I can show you, show you this properly. So this is my first shelf of classic fiction. Most of these I had to read for school or I bought because, hey, you know, when you study English, you need to read a ton of literature, uh, that sort of idea. So I try to keep this like similar, similar editions together. And this is a shelf where I have fewest similar editions of. So I have some older style penguins on this side here. I bought most of these in secondhand books, uh, bookstores uh, over the years. Um, and then here are again, books I had to buy for classes. Uh, the Poetic Edda, for instance, Pearl of Oros Island, enjoyed those. But there's also books here that I just bought for fun. And then this is the top shelf of classic fiction. This is probably the most satisfying. The reason why I stack books like this is because that way you can just fit a lot more books onto a shelf. Uh, pro tip, so uh, I definitely don't want to buy another bookshelf and this way it just works a little bit better. So I got all of my Penguin editions that I bought for classes. And I've got some vintage, some Oxford, and I think everything else is like Wordsworth uh, kind of additions. Those are all of the classics that I have here. Not saying there are no classics on the other shelves, but these are the ones I just kind of pulled out and put together. I can't go any further back to film you this shelf because then I'm in my stairwell. Um, so I don't want to fall down either. So this is a little bit wobbly, perhaps. But these are all of my black books that I have here. Um, there's a mixture here of fantasy, YA, some book series that perhaps need to go elsewhere in the future. Um, and these are some of these I've read. I don't really keep a TBR shelf like separately because I also have books that I think are pretty, but that I don't read. Let me show you what I mean. This is a book that I don't think I'll read anytime soon. I found this at a like thrift shop uh, for like one or two euros when I lived in Leida. And this is a completely illustrated version of the Cimmerillion from the 90s. And it's absolutely stunning. There you have one of the illustrations that's in this book. Um, it has a really, really nice cover too. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be reading this anytime soon. This one is just a good one to have. And it's just one of those pretty books that sits on my shelf, but that I don't really read. And this is the white and cream shelf. Um, again, um, I just like this style of organization, you could say. This is a book I just finished. I quite enjoyed it. It's a fantasy series where a lady in sort of like Victorian inspired era uh, writes about her investigations into dragons and it's pretty cool. Another quite recent read for me that I really enjoyed was Belgravia by Julian Fellows. This is a historical fiction that I read and it's one of the best historical fictions I've read in a long time. So very much enjoyed that. And this book also has one of my all-time favorite books, and that's Martin Amos Money. If you like unreliable narrators and just people who are just generally a bit hateful, then uh, this is a book I highly recommend. If you're interested in 1980s yuppie culture, this is also a good one. And then last but not least, a book I definitely want to get to sometime this year is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This is a fantasy uh, novel that I've heard so many people raving about. 
Welcome to The Brown Shelf. And again, as before, a mixture of books I've read, books I haven't read, and uh, let me just uh, take you through some of the favorites on this shelf. Definitely a favorite would be Night Film by Marisha Peschel. This is one of the best thrillers I've read in a very long time. It's nicely suspenseful and it's got a nice sort of ending to it as well. Uh, I really enjoy this book. Another great historical uh, fiction that I read is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, about a blind girl who lives in France in World War II, and together with her dad, she has to flee Paris, moves to the coast, and then her dad ultimately dies, and sort of about how, how she survives. And then the last favorite on this shelf would be The Little Book by Selwyn Edwards. This was recommended to me by a friend of mine, and I absolutely loved it. This book is set mainly at turn-of-the-century Vienna, uh, so like 1900, 1899, around that era. But it's about someone who sort of time travels there and uh, meets his dad, who he didn't really know, and who passed away. So it's a bit of a crazy story, um, but it's a very, very interesting story indeed. And I believe this author worked on this book for like 25 years or something crazy like that. This is a really, really good read. Now, I said that that was my last favorite, but then I spotted this. This is Colin McCann's Let the Great World Spin. So this book is set in New York, um, but it travels throughout time, and it just has all of these different characters that somehow come together on the day that someone tight ropes the World Trade Center. And um, it's a very interesting read as well, and because I like this book so much, I end up, ended up buying and also reading This Side of Brightness by the same author. Again, very much set in New York and another interesting concept there. Um, so yeah, that was a book I really enjoyed. A book I would like to get to is Arrowwood by my Mick Finlay. Uh, this is a book that's apparently sort of like um, the Sherlock Holmes of like the underclass. So it's about like a detective in the Victorian era. I usually really like those kind of tropes. There is a second book out in this series called The Murder Pit. So I definitely want to read this and see if I like it so that I can get around to buying the second one. Also on this shelf are a couple of first books and series. This is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is a very much acclaimed fantasy series and I'd like to get to it someday. All right, so this is the red shelf and I can't believe how many red books I actually have. There are quite a few here. Uh, let me pull out some favorites. Definite favorite here, uh, The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith, a.k.a. J.K. Rowling. I really enjoyed this series, and I don't hear enough people on, you, uh, on BookTube talking about this. Um, this second book in the series was absolutely my favorite. Um, I definitely still have to read the next book in the series, which you will see when we go one shelf down. Another book on this shelf that I really enjoyed with Col was Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. If you want to read just a very important book about slavery, um, then this is it. And then the last favorite on this shelf is Neil Gaiman's American Gods. This is one of my all-time favorite books as well. It's just a really, really cool retelling using so, so many different fantasy styles and references to mythology, and I absolutely adored this book. Then for some books that I would like to get to, and that is also very, very pretty, is Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. Now that I've read Jamaica Inn and really enjoyed it, I definitely want to read her most famous book, so Rebecca is definitely on my 2019 to read list. Another recent purchase is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I heard that in terms of thrillers, this is one of the best ones to have come out in recent years. Not much of a thriller fan, I usually find them very predictable, so uh, I hope I can get down with this one. And this is The Green Shelf. Lots of green books, as you can see. Um, so let me just get to some of my favorites. A definite favorite is The Street Philosopher by Matthew Plempin. This is a great historical fiction novel uh, set in Manchester in the 19th century. And there's a mystery, something with the Crimean War. Uh, it's a really, really good book. I wouldn't say this is a favorite per se, but a book that very much surprised me is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This is a YA story, and I'm usually not into YA contemporary. But this one was good, and I didn't see the twist coming at the end, which is always lovely when that happens. And another favorite. This is Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, another Neil Gaiman book. He's one of my favorite authors, and this is very much like... I, I very much thought it was very Alice in Wonderland inspired, and it's just a really, really great book. This shelf also houses some 
unusual books. Uh, I picked this up at a secondhand bookstore. This is a very old copy of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson that is also illustrated. And from that same secondhand bookstore, uh, store, I picked up this. This is the Edgar Allan Poe 42 Tales. This is some freaky edition from the, 70, uh, from the 70s, I believe. I'll show you what it looks like inside. I mean, I don't know about you, but these black and whites are like pencil stick. I'm not sure how they did this, but this is such a freaky sort of very Edgar Allan Poe appropriate sort of uh, illustrations that are in here. Something that I would like to prioritize reading in 2019, Lethal White by Robert Galbraith. That's definitely something that I'm looking very much forward to, to be reading. This is the fourth book in the series. And this book as well, I've had this for some time now, and I definitely need to get around to reading it. Um, it's about the golem and the jinni. The golem is like Jewish folklore, and the jinni is, of course, Middle Eastern. And it's apparently set in New York where these two creatures live, meet each other. I'm not sure. Here we have the blue shelf. And this is a shelf that I didn't wasn't able to fit everything on here. So we have a bit of blue on another shelf, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but yeah, this is the blue shelf. Down here, we keep the rest of the blue books. So I've just come to realize that there are either a lot of books here that I still want to get to, or there are books that just aren't like solid, solid favorites. Like, I enjoyed them, but that's about it. But a book that I did really enjoy that's on the shelf is The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. Again, a little bit dark, a little bit crazy, um, but definitely a good read. And another book that I really enjoyed on this shelf is Mythos by Stephen Fry. I have several Stephen Fry books, which you may have seen in the pans of the different shelves. Uh, I've read most of the ones that I have. I think there's maybe one of them that I haven't read yet. Uh, but yeah, this is he's just a great author. So a book that I've been meaning to read for the longest time is this one. This is The Last Days of Night by Graham Moore. This is a historical fiction novel, and it follows different scientists at like the end of the 19th century. It's about sort of like the race for, you know, who gets to do electricity. I think that that's what it's about. It sounded very intriguing. I haven't heard anything about this book, uh, but it seemed really, really nice. And then just a great addition to have all of Jane Austen's novels in one big bind up. This was very handy when I was doing my classes. I bought this definitely later on when I was studying. But if I ever want to read a Jane Austen novel, I could just go to this. Completely forgot about this one. I just spotted it when I was like, oh, I don't have anything else to talk about on this shelf. But These Shallow Graves by Jennifer Donnelly. It's... I think it's like it's a YA story most definitely but it's set in like 19th century New York and it's like a mystery that she's trying to solve and this was very well written I was very surprised about that so I'm trying to figure out the best way to show you this shelf uh, it starts with gray and then we move on to pink we've got some yellow some purple somewhere and also a bit of orange here um, so that would be the bottom shelf right here a book that was a bit simple. It's a YA sort of historical fiction novel that wasn't really all that. It was trying too hard to be more than it actually was, but an absolutely stunning book to look at, of course, is Tangled Webs by Lee Bross. Another favorite book, Cormac McCarthy's The Road. If you like dystopians, I think it doesn't get any better than this. And by now, you may have gathered that I like quite weird books. This is another one of those weird ones. This is Flannery O'Connor's Wise Blood, which it's a bit of an acquired taste, but it is one of my favorites. So a book on these shelves that I definitely want to get to sometime this year is, is Heroes by Stephen Fry. He first wrote about sort of the uh, myth of origins and where everything is coming from, according to the Greeks. And now he's decided to tackle the heroes of Greek mythology. So that's interesting. And and I think a book that has gotten a lot of hype in 2018 is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. Apparently, the second book is already out. The third one is coming this year. I'm looking forward to trying to, uh, trying to read this one. So for the first shelf of my series, I thought we could start at the top. These are all series that I've completed, that I've read every single book of. You will see that um, from the Divergent series, two books are missing. I decluttered those because... I didn't really like Insurgent and Allegiant. If I ever get back to the series, I will only be reading Divergent. I know that much. And then we have all of my Mortal Instruments, my Twilight, as well as my Hunger Games right there. And the Lunar Chronicles is right there at the end. Um, all series that I enjoyed. By now, not necessarily my favorites, 
but they were good ones and that's why they're all the way at the top because I don't think I'll be reaching for any of these anytime soon. Then we get into favorites territory you could say. Uh, so this is a shelf where uh, some of it I've read but not all of it. So the stuff here that you see at the right on the stack and the Lainey Taylor books, those I haven't read. Everything else on the shelf I have read. So we're starting this shelf with the Ben Aronovich series and as you can see I have them all in different sizes so they're a bit out of order. But yeah, I like to organize my shelves by size. So that's why they're organized like this. Then we have the Lockwood & Co series, which is one of my other favorites. And despite what everybody says and how tropey it is, I did enjoy the Red Queen series by Victoria Aveyard. So that's why that is there. Then we have the Strange the Dreamer duology, as well as some Sarah J Mass at the top. I still need to read some Philip Pullman and then the Ransom Riggs. Um, uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I've read the first one, but didn't like it enough to really continue to Sari, so maybe I should just get on with it. I know there's a fourth book now, but I'm not sure whether I like it very much. And in terms of editions, I just really like these Laney Taylor books. Um, I have the hardback for Muse of Nightmares because the paperback wasn't out yet, so, um, but I really like this like shiny silvery cover. And the same goes for the Red Queen series. You can say what you want about it, but I'm a sucker for a good cover and these covers are stunning. And then we have our next series shelf. Again, some of, the, some of it I've read, some of it I haven't. In fact, most of this I've read. The only thing I haven't read is the Amber and the Ashes trilogy by Saba Tahir. And I haven't read Vengeful by V.E. Schwab and the This Savage Song duology. It has a different name, I believe. Everything else on this shelf I've actually already read. I really love the Illuminae Files uh, series and these books are stunning. Let me pull one out. So I'm not a hardback kind of girl. I don't like hardbacks all that much because I find them just too heavy and bulky. But this is just, I had to get these in a hardback because this like overlay kind of slips off and then you get the actual cover. You don't get that in the paperback. So I really, really like uh, the way these books are laid out. Like the covers are stunning. The books are really cool too. Um, and it has great representation and it's a really nice sort of like set in space kind of going against corporate a big corporation kind of a spiel behind it and it's really really lovely. Then another shelf down is sort of my Rick Riordan shelf for the most part. Uh, as you can see about half of it is taken up by his books. Um, and then we get to Jay Kristoff's Nevernight. I believe the third book is coming out later this year so I'm excited for that. Some Cinda Williams Chima and then another one of my favorite series so I'll show you that. So the Yard series by Alex Grecian, I really enjoyed this. There is apparently a fifth book out, but this is sort of like one of those series that kind of petered out towards the end. Uh, it didn't really have a solid ending to it, I feel. Um, but this is a good series if you like your sort of like Victorian detective kind of stories, which I tend to enjoy. So this is very, very lovely. And then for Rick Riordan, I pretty much read all of the Percy Jackson series as well as these two books, um, which uh, is sort of like Percy Jackson telling you about different myths and heroes and those kind of things. So a bit like what Stephen Fry is doing, but then for a young adult audience, which I really enjoyed. I tried getting into the Lost Hero series, but Oh boy, I didn't really enjoy the first one because I felt it was too similar to what was going on in the Percy Jackson series. So that's a bit of a shame, but uh, yeah, I definitely do want to get back to it. Maybe when I get to the Son of Neptune. To be quite honest, I had to read The Lightning Thief twice as well before I enjoyed that. Big, big favorite here is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I definitely still need to read God's Grave. This, oh, this this cover is stunning as well. It's a bit of a slow paced read at first. You get a lot of background and footnotes, which kind of takes the pace out of the story. But it is really, really important that you do read them because else you just don't get the world building as much. Um, and you don't really get the motivations behind why the character is doing a lot. But I really enjoyed this book. Um, so I can't wait to get to God's Grave and then on to the third one. And then we have another shelf with books that I've read and some that I haven't read. Uh, we definitely get more and more into like books I haven't read as time goes on. Um, but we first start off here with the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Maas. It's one of my favorites. Um, I just sort of 
stuck the book back in here for <laughs> the sake of having it complete on the shelf here, but I'm currently reading Kingdom of Ash, and I hope to be able to finish it this weekend. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I've only read about a tenth of this book so far, so we'll see. Uh, this is a series, the Jacoby series by William, was it, was that, is that his name? William Ritter. I haven't heard much about it, but I found all three of these for a good price at Book Depository, so that's why I wanted to read it. I think it's like historical fiction, but again, more YA aimed, I believe. One of my favorite fantasy series is Genevieve Cogman's The Invisible Library. I read the first four. Uh, the Mortal Word came out just at the end of last year, so that's definitely, I, I read one of these books every year, you could say. Then we have the Darkest Mind trilogy by Alexandra Bracken. I hear so many people raving about this. This has been on my shelves for quite some time, so this is definitely a series that I need to get to in 2019. Tahira Mafi's Shatter Me series. Again, something I hear a lot of people raving about. Not sure I'm going to enjoy it, but we'll see. And then we have MJ Carter's The Strangler Vine. Uh, trilogy so far. This book looks stunning. It's another like historical fiction detective set in Victorian London kind of book, so I'm down. Uh, I just haven't read any of these yet. And then we're on to the last bit of books on these shelves, um, the reason why these are here. I just sort of cleared out my shelves a little bit because I want to make sure I have some space for new series because you could see that there are a lot of like first books and series on my other shelves. So I definitely want to be migrating things to this shelf once I start reading a bit more. Um, I've got some Brandon Sanderson here. I definitely think I'll be expanding my Brandon Sanderson collection beyond these two later in the year. Then we have Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files, which is one of my favorites. I've read the first two and really enjoyed it. Another series that I love is um, the uh, Freya McGray series by Oscar de Muriel. Let me grab this. Not only are the covers absolutely stunning, this is another one of those Victorian era detective police sort of novels that I really enjoy. There's a theme here. And these are really, really good. I read all four of them. And then next to that, we have the Queen of the Searling trilogy by Erica Johansson. I think if there's another series that I need to pick to read this year, it will be this one, because I hear so many great things about it. All right, so now that we've gone over all our major bookshelves, let's have a look at the Harry Potter stuff. So I keep it separated over two different shelves. This is a side table that I have sent sitting next to my couch and that's where I keep some of the bigger books. And then on this shelf, which is on the other side of the room, I keep all of my Harry Potter books. As you can see, I've got also a little bit of merch sitting around here um, and like different editions of different books. So um, let me know if you would like a more in-depth tour of where everything is from and which editions I have. And then we've come full circle, so I really hope you enjoyed getting a bit of a tour, a bit of a sneak peek uh, of all of my bookshelves and everything that I've got going on here. Uh, please let me know if you do want to see a more in-depth version where I show you each and every single one of these books. That is, of course, possible. I could also do like just a tour of like one single shelf or just the book series or just the standalones or just the classics. Let me know how you would like me to do that because I think it may actually be best to sort of split that up a little bit more. And yeah, if you enjoyed watching this video, I would very much enjoy it if you could thumbs it up. And if you would like to see more by me, I make new videos three times a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. And for now, I would like to thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!